All right, I am back in Yosemite. This time I am way up north above the valley, going to a place called Hetch Hetchy. And if you've never heard of it, Hetch Hetchy is kind of a smaller version of Yosemite Valley that was flooded and dammed up to provide power to San Francisco some years ago. So it is now a basically unused reservoir, but there is a hiking trail around it and there is a fairly high ridge that contains that valley that I want to get on top of. Now there are two main waterfalls on the kind of standard route. One of them I cannot pronounce, it's Tallulula or something like that. And then the other one is Wapama, and that's the big one. That's the one that most people hike to. It's got this really cool little bridge system going around it. And when it is flowing, it's amazing. This waterfall is pretty incredible. Neither waterfall is running right now because it is late fall. We have had basically no rain this summer. Now I've already done a video of the part of the hike that takes the regular lowland trail up to Wapama Falls that I did with my dad a few months ago. I'm not going to be filming a lot of the approach because I've only got one or two batteries. The other thing is, is I got a bit of a late start today. It's just been one of those days where it was just difficult to get out. Uh, Hetch Hetchy, unlike the rest of Yosemite, has very strict hours on its gate opening and closing schedule. Uh, they will be closed at five, which is only like six and a half hours from now. Um, I do not know how long this is going to take because there's no trail where I want to go. There is a trail that goes from the reservoir and kind of zigzags up a couple switchbacks up to the top of the ridge. What I want to do is actually cut right across the top of the ridge and try to find the top of Wapama Falls. I don't know if that's even going to be possible, so we'll see if I make it. If not, it'll just be a cool day to get out and walk around. All right, I'm going to begin my hike. I've already filmed this part of the journey, and you can watch it on another video. So I'll see you when I get to the switchbacks. All right, so I left the parking lot about 20, 25 minutes ago, and I am at the junction with the trail that goes up. So this says Vernon Lake, Beehive and Laurel Lake. So that should take me up to the top of these cliffs, and then I'm gonna try to go across. Can't see it from here, but up to at least the rock above Wapama Falls, which is there behind that tree. Maybe up to Hetch Hetchy Dome, which is up to the left. But as of now, I'm in new territory. Still on the first switch back after about 10 minutes. Whew, getting up here. We're on the corner from the first switch back. Been on trail for about 40 minutes. This is the longest of all the switchbacks, according to the map. It is hot today. Seems like Hetch Hetchy Reservoir has missed the memo on summer being over. Quite beautiful, but quite hot.
It's about 11.55, third switch back. I think this is switchback five. Trail doesn't change a whole lot at any point. Sometimes the trail itself does because it's going back and forth between really rocky, short sandy strips, and even old blacktop. But you're basically just climbing up the side of the hill. Switch back six back there. Pretty area. Very wooded. Kind of surprising. Looking up here, I would just think it would be nothing but rock. Anyway, I figure about 15 minutes, I should be at the point where the switchbacks stop and the trail continues onto the lakes. And it's at that point that I gotta decide if cutting right and taking a line that follows the shore is uh, possible. Woohoo, we'll see. All right, 12.30, next switchback. Look at these rock stairs that they put in. Be a lot of water flow through here in the spring. Of course, we got nothing right now, but that's what you get for living in California basically, two seasons. <laughs> okay, last switchback. It is 1240. And so what I should see next is some kind of track off to my left. Once I get up here a little ways. And then it's decision time. Am I going to just strike out to the right and try to find my way to the Falls Valley or what? So this is a new thing for me, putting on the bug net. Just thought I'd see what it was like. Um, it's pretty much exactly what you'd think. Um, the no CM mesh is nice. Like I still have a good view. Um, it's noticeable, but it's not terrible. Um, but I think, you know, just like even just physically and psychologically, it's nice to have the net on. Cause I know that even when I'm hearing bugs, they're not landing on me. They're not getting in my ear. Um, there are mosquitoes out here, which is irritating, so I'm gonna have to like stick my food under the net to eat, but it's worth it to be able to sit down in comfort for a few minutes 
rather than just batting away bugs the whole time. Oh man, should I come up here for lunch? Wow, mental note. Once you get to the split, just climb like another 50 feet. You can eat right here. So according to the map, once I get past some of this, ooh, pretty creek. I should be to a relatively flat area, which if I was gonna turn off the trail, that would be the place to do it. Wow, it is so much more lush up here than I expected. You know, looking up from the bottom, all you see is rock. I thought that's all that was gonna be up here. So here's a good reason for a bug net. This thing would have been either on my nose or in my eyes. look like you get through and at least get up on top of that ridge probably be some pretty cool views and that would probably tell me what I'm looking at for the rest of the trip so I think I'm gonna give this a go This is more like what I expected up here. Big rock. Actually, all I was expecting was big rock. <laughs> what do you suppose is on the other side of these big rocks? Nice. So as you can see, I'm right across from the parking lot down there. So I've actually climbed back quite a ways. Fun area. Like a little maze of rocks. All kinds of cool spots like this. Okay. This is getting 
full of non-fun. All right. Ah, okay. So, reality check. Okay. First of all, this is treacherous. And I need to pay attention to what I'm doing. Okay. <laughs> all right. It has taken me about two hours and 40 minutes to get here. Now, that's with stopping video oh please don't break lunch blah 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 however i was moving pretty decently in between because i was on trail right now i'm just kind of going in between boonie crashing climbing over rocks coming to ledges having to go back go around the ledge and uh quite honestly it's kind of slow going and i'm getting a little worried because hetch hetchy closes its gates at the road at five o'clock and they mention that to you when you show up so pretty much one way or another in about 15 maybe 20 minutes I'm just gonna have to stop and turn around. <laughs> this is what's disheartening. I'm like a quarter mile away from the dam as far as the bottom trail goes. And although I'm way the heck up here, I don't think I've even made up for the distance I backtracked on the switchbacks. So, you know, the terrain has so much to do with the speed out here. A lot can hide between the contour lines of a topo map. And what's hiding out here is a lot of brush that I wasn't expecting and just some big rock that is not always easy to traverse. So, as much as I would like to say that I have stood right at the top of Wapama Falls, I just don't know if I'm gonna make it in time so I'm gonna climb up to the top of this thing and see where I am. I mean, wherever I am, this is pretty spectacular. Just because it doesn't have a name on a map doesn't mean it isn't cool. Woo! Yeah. Nothing wrong with that. See, there's a major canyon right in front of me here. Can't see it, but I can feel it. It's gonna get real steep, real fast. Yeah, I'm not climbing through this. I just don't have the time. In like 10 minutes, it's gonna be halfway. Yep, it's straight down over there too. I mean, I'm sure there's a way around this. I probably just need to climb back up, go around to the right. I could make the top of that ridge in 10 minutes, no problem. But only if I knew how to get there. Gosh, it's irritating, it's so close. If I just left like a hour, half hour early, I'd have enough time to get around this obstacle. If I went around this entire hill, I can see that you can get around it up there. And not from here, not happening. So, gosh, it's almost two o'clock. I've got three hours to get out of here. Okay, I climbed up those rocks behind me, coming around the corner here, and there we go. So I am nearing the halfway point of my hike, but on the way back, I won't stop for lunch. I won't stop for pictures. That should get me maybe 30 minutes. Is this poison oak? No, I'm going for it.
Okay, I didn't stop again. So <laughs> I'm out here next to the cool two trees. I just keep finding a little bit more to go on. Oh, this is so gorgeous. Gosh, it's just like right there. It doesn't seem like it would take that long. Well, that was an amazing view. Did not get to spend as near as much time as I wanted. Couldn't even eat my victory peaches. Because <laughs> uh, it is 2.40. And I've got to get all the way there. In my car. Up the road and out of the park. By 5 o'clock. Took me three and a half hours to get here. So, not going to be a lot of filming. Not going to be a lot of anything but moving. So... I'll see you back at the car. It's so weird being able to see my car from here and knowing that I've still got a couple hours of hiking to do. <laughs> mostly I just don't want to get trapped behind the gate. Well, I mean, mostly I don't want to get mauled by a bear or killed by a mountain lion, but you know. I don't think I came down this on the way in. This is pretty obviously a creek at some point. I'm wondering if I'm right above the feed for the uh, Tallulah Falls thing. Hard to say. Three o'clock. Still moving. Pretty sure that this is the top of Tallulah Fall. Okay, all I gotta do is get over this ridge, walk through a whole bunch of bushes, go down seven or eight switchbacks, and then walk a mile and then drive out of the park. Got two hours. All right, it's 315. GPS says that one more contour line now should be at the trail. It says it's that way. Looks kind of steep for one contour line, but what do you know? I will trust technology. So I'm gonna climb right straight up this thing as much as I can. Probably go flat for a little while and then be on trail. Hopefully be heading down the switchbacks before 3.30. And, ta-da. All right, 3.33. I need to be sitting in my car by about 4.40. So let's see what we can do. Oh, oh, here's where I went in. It's uh, it's 3.43, so if I'd gone another 10 minutes up that trail, 
I would have found a much easier way to get over there. But hey. All right, 350. Trail was a little longer than I remembered. <laughs> so here's the crossroads at Chechi, four miles. Four miles. 350, 450, holy cow. I don't know. I don't know if I can do this. Four miles an hour is like pretty much top speed on sidewalks for me. It'd be dangerous to walk that fast out here with all these rocks. If it really takes me four miles, you know, I don't know. Not sure I'm gonna be able to pull this off. All right, 359, second switch back. Moving along nicely. That was the other switch back. Where are we here? 402. All right. Yeah, jamming. Making some good time here. Four thirteen. That was a long one. That must be switchback three. So I'm thinking that this is two, and then one, and then one mile. I'm a coming. It's 4.20, if I can get all the way to the bottom of this by 4.30, make it to the car in 15 minutes, yikes. I don't know, I don't know. 4.45, 15 minute drive out of here. Man, yeah, I'm gonna be cutting it close. This is crazy. It's 4.25. So this is good. I'm uh, three minutes faster than I was hoping I would be. If I remember right, come around this corner, you should see the signs. And then I just got a blast out of here. Oh, geez. And by blast, I mean walk carefully. <laughs> End of the switchback trail, back on regular trail. It's pretty much just as bad as the other one. Okay, I need to get all the way there. 15 minutes over this. Right, take the speed ups where you can get them. This is fine. I'm fine. Everything's fine. Four 
4.30 home stretch. Here's the creek. It is quite a bit faster on the way back. There's a good chance I'll barely make it. Four thirty-five. Four thirty-eight. I'm in the cave. Four forty-three. One more hill. 15 minutes to the gate. I think I'll make it. So it looks like I've got a ranger escort. <laughs> uh, these, these boys were sitting in the parking lot, probably waiting for me. Oh well, what are you gonna do? It says the gate closes at five, not 4.45. So for the record, you can make it from the parking lot to the ranger hut in uh, about 13 minutes if you completely disregard the speed limit. I think this is the gift. All right, five o'clock on the nose. Gate is passed. I'm gonna go find me some food. All right, I'm Doug, this is Backcountry Pilgrim. I hope you have enjoyed coming along with me on this very cool hike, and I hope that you will subscribe to the channel, like the video if you liked it, and thank you for watching, and I'll catch you next time.